Okay, one of the nice pieces we have in the museum here is this chunk of iron meteorites. This is called Canyon Diablo. It's from Meteor Crater, Arizona. About 50,000 years ago, a huge meteorite asteroid came in that was several kilometers, well, maybe not that big, maybe uh, a few million tons came down, created a huge explosion, created Meteor Crater, which is about a kilometer across, and most of it vaporized, and so we have some of the metal shrapnel that was around. This is uh, one of the large pieces. This is, as it says, 357 pounds. Uh, it's an old uh, plaque, which is why it's not in kilograms. And this is a beautiful uh, piece here. Other things in our museum, uh, for example, we have here uh, some nice chondrites. These are uh, some of the most primitive rocks that formed early in the history of the solar system. This one here, Allende, this fell in Mexico in 1969. It's one of the most studied meteorites, about a ton of it was collected. Uh, the dark material of there is this dusty matrix in between those light inclusions that you see are chondrules and what we call CAIs or calcium aluminum rich inclusions or refractory inclusions. These things hark back are among the earliest solids to form in the history of the solar system. Uh, and they have unusual isotopic compositions. And so a lot of people work on the components here. Here's a, another type of chondrite here. This one is from China. It fell in 84, Zhaodong. Uh, this is an ordinary chondrite. They're, these chondrites are called ordinary because the most common meteorites observed to fall, about 74% or so of meteorites observed to fall are ordinary chondrites. Down here we have a few other kinds of meteorites. On the left we have an iron meteorite uh, with a beautiful structure there. This is called the Widmann-Staten structure. It's an intergrowth of two different iron-nickel minerals, camosite and taenite, with different amounts of nickel inside. They form an octahedral structure, and when polished and etched, uh, it forms this very interesting pattern. Uh, this one is called Arispe, which was found in Mexico in 1896, I guess that's what the label says. Um, Iron, most iron meteorites form after an asteroid melts and differentiates. Just like the Earth has a metal core and a silicate mantle and crust, asteroids that have melted, like Vesta, which we have samples of over there, which I can show you in a few minutes, have also melted. Um, most asteroids have not melted, but some have, and formed iron cores and then uh, basaltic crusts. The iron cores, the iron meteorites, many of them are from the cores of these melted and differentiated asteroids. This iron meteorite here is from the core of a melted asteroid, perhaps um, something like Vesta, though not particularly from that particular asteroid. Uh, you may get basalt on the surface of some of these asteroids. We have a basalt over there on the right. Uh, this is Milbilili. It formed, it fell in Australia uh, and was recovered from there. It's a basalt, much like uh, the basalts um, in Hawaii or in the Columbia River Gorge in Washington and Oregon, uh, in Iceland, covering the Earth's ocean basins. Um, and in between the uh, core and the mantle, we may get this mineral olivine, the magnesium silicate, uh, for accumulating at the top of the uh, core, the bottom of the mantle, and then we may get a, a rock called a palisite, like this one here, Simchon, which is, represents the core mantle boundary of the melted asteroid. Olivine, that's the uh, magnesium silicate, sort of the dark brown or green mineral there. Uh, from the bottom of the mantle, and metal, metallic iron nickel, from the top of the core. And so we have some of these rocks preserving the core mantle boundary there. We have different kinds of chondrites here in this um, display here. Uh, these are carbonaceous chondrites. They're called that, not necessarily because they're so rich in carbon, but they're dark uh, materials. They're, these are from different asteroids. This is a uh, called the CV, sort of like the Yende one I showed you a little bit earlier. Uh, it has very large chondrules in it uh, and very little metal. Uh, this one, a CR from a different asteroid, also a carbonaceous chondrite, has a lot more metal. In fact, if you zoom in on it, you might be able to see some of those little shiny, uh, little silver-colored flakes. That's not silver, it's iron nickel metal. Um, and so these are some very nice pieces there. Uh, we have, well, why don't we come around here? Uh, to this exhibit. I was talking about differentiated asteroids before. Um, over here at the bottom, we have some basalts from the Earth. Uh, these are from our collection. We have these, this one here, which is this ropey lava called the Hoi Hoi from Hawaii. We have other lavas here. Some have a lot of holes in it, fascicular basalts like that. The holes are bubbles formed from escaping gases in the lava. 
Some have inclusions like that. And yet, these are all from the earth, but we also have basalts from other bodies as well. This eucrite, again, Milbalili, which I showed you earlier, is a basalt from perhaps from Vesta, a differentiated body, and it's basalt flows at the crust. We have another kind of meteoritic basalt here, an angrite, that has a somewhat different composition, uh, but it's also a basalt from basalt flows. We have a basalt here, this one's Zagami, this is a Martian basalt, this is from the uh, surface of Mars. It's much like a basalt, but from a different parent body. I don't have any big lunar basalts to show you, but the Ibaria, the dark areas of the moon, are basaltic. Uh, I have a lunar impact belt there. It's not a basalt, but unfortunately, we don't have a good lunar basalt to show you. But the, the dark areas of the moon are filled with basalts, and there are lunar basalt uh, meteorites, but we don't have any good samples here at UCLA. Um, we have a couple of a uh, few other things here. When asteroids hit each other and they uh, at very high velocity in some cases, and so the, there'll be mechanical grinding, there'll be crushing, there'll be impact melting, high pressure minerals could form, there may be mixing of different components. And so some of the things that we have here, uh, you can see, if you can zoom in here, for example, this meteorite found in Algeria, Tanis Roofed 057, you can see that there's different class that have different colors and textures in there. So this is a rock that's just been uh, assembled from different components together. We can see that even more spectacularly in the one to its right near Ilko from Australia. We can see that there's different class of different compositions that are, have been put together like that. Um, sometimes there'll be so much energy involved in an impact that the rock will melt nearly completely. We have an example here, what's called an impact melt breccia. Breccia just means it's a mixture of different components. And this has been impact melted, so this Largely, about 80% of this has been melted, so it's silicate melt in there. Uh, the rock over here, Portales Valley, which fell in New Mexico uh, in 98, has some, some very coarse uh, metal grains in there and then some uh, silicate class that have been partly melted. Uh, this one has scotch tape on it because it's been breaking along the class boundaries and it's been falling apart. We have to find a better way of assembling it together. Um, but it was all in one piece. Originally. This meteorite right here, Estacado, uh, was found in Texas, and this is uh, looks like just a metamorphosed chondrite, but you probably won't be able to see it so well in the picture, but there's a little metal vein that goes across it. Uh, perhaps you can perhaps you can see it or not. That's a it's been shocked, sort of like the one in the picture over there, and the metal has been injected along a fracture going through the rock. We have a couple of recent additions to our collection here. Um, this one is a polymic eucrite. Eucrite, again, just means basalt. A polymic means it's made out of many different kinds of materials put together. And so we can see all the different class in there. It's very pretty. Uh, these are from different basalt flows in the parent body, which have been broken up by impacts to the surface of the parent body, jumbled, and then welded together. Uh, this rock here is very unusual. We've got this quite recently. Uh, NWA stands for Northwest Africa, and that's the particular number it is. And this is a, uh, a sort of a unique uh, meteorite. It's been melted, but may have formed by impact melting of a chondrite. And so there's a very nice specimen over here. And so the UCLA collection has, uh, let's see, I actually have the numbers over here, uh, 2,400 samples, about 1,400 different meteorites uh, represented uh, among them. It's the fifth largest collection in the United States. We're beginning to put together this museum and we have a number of nice specimens here and a lot more upstairs. And as the uh, museum grows and we get some more money to be able to make better displays and things like that, we'll put more meteorites out.